Okay, I think we will get going if that's okay. So um, to those of you that have just joined us, you're in our June online workshop. Um, welcome and uh, great to have you with us. So for those of you that haven't joined one of our webinars before, um, we'll just give you a quick whiz through about ProVeg and school plates. Um, to those of you that are regulars, apologies for this part, but we are ProVeg UK, we're part of ProVeg International. We are a global organization with 11 teams um, around the world. You can see some of the places um, across four continents. We've got more than 200 staff. And our mission is very simple. It's to replace 50% of animal products globally with plant-based and cultivated foods by 2040. Um, and just to give you a sense of, um, we, we, we do this a lot, basically, is the, the gist of this slide. So we're currently supporting over 55 local authorities in the UK and over 25 multi-academy trusts and catering companies. So we see a lot of menus and what's, what's going on and what's working and not working. And that's around 5,300 schools and close to 900,000 children eating from those menus every day. And very simply, our aims are to make school food healthier and more sustainable. Um, so we want to um, help increase the uptake of vegetarian dishes that you already have on your menus. We want to try and help reduce some of the meat content in some of your meat dishes and get more plant based, really good, tasty plant based options on there. And that's kind of what we're going to show you today is how to make those. Um, also, doing this, having more plant based food is more inclusive of different cultures, faiths, um, kids with allergens and intolerances. Um, and we're also finding lots of our partners are saving money too, because the ingredients tend to be cheaper. So very quickly, we talked about um, sustainability. So just really to show you, um, we've taken an average of some of the typical dishes that we see in primary school menus, typical meat-based, typical vegetarian, and our own plant-based recipes. And these are just averages of the um, CO2 emissions. So essentially what you need to take away from this is our plant-based dishes are on average just over a quarter of a typical meat-based dish and about half of a vegetarian dish. So even if you switch a few of your dishes out, even if you reduce some of the meat content, it makes a difference. It's all positive steps. This is just a little new slide that I've added because we've just been, um, again, just trying to make it easier for caterers and for parents to understand uh, what, we're, what we're talking about. Um, and so this really focuses on the nutrition side of what we do and the cost, the fact that a lot of the dishes are very you know, cost effective. So we've just put together a full menu for a week. This is actually for Scotland where they have lots of soups. If anyone's joining us from Scotland, um, we have lots of soups as a starter every day, which is great because it's lots of veg and lentils. And we're just highlighting some of those kind of facts around, um, you know, a dish providing however much protein, 18 grams of protein, almost a third of the daily calcium. So it's just really to highlight how nutritious our dishes are and how, how nutritious plant based food can be. And then um, a little comparison um, just looking at a meat based spaghetti bolognese. So this is with beef mints versus exactly the same recipe. But instead of the beef, we have lentils and soya mints and just showing, you know, that with the plant based one, it's 27% uh, cheaper, 87% lower in saturated fat. It has more than double the fiber, which is super important and less than a third of the emissions and almost um, almost identical protein levels. So you're not missing out. In fact, you're just gaining by having that version. If you haven't um, already, you probably have, please download our recipes um, and our guide, which talks you through the School Plates programme. The new recipes that Lisa's demoing today aren't in this, but we will be having a version two towards the end of the year that will have all the new recipes in. So there'll be another 35 coming out by the end of this year. Um, Again, if you haven't already, do have a look at our website. Um, we've got a School Plates Award Scheme, and we just yesterday announced our first two gold winners, which is quite incredible. We didn't expect to have gold winners by this point in the year when we only started in January. 
Um, so well done to Plant Based School Kitchens and well done to Waltham Forest Catering for already hitting gold. Um, it's free to enter. You simply send us your menus and we score them, give you feedback, give you some suggestions of some simple next steps. And it's open to any school caterer in the UK. So if you're an individual school, an academy trust, a private caterer, just get in touch. Um, this is just, I'm not going to go through it, but just to give you an idea of the six actions that we ask you to complete in order to get the bronze award. And we have seven um, with bronze already and another two with silver and our two gold. So um, yeah, it's going really well. Um, if you haven't already had a listen to this, um, BBC Inside Science, this was from the beginning of the year. There's an episode all about vegetarian and plant-based school food. And um, yeah, just a, an interesting discussion. So we would recommend to have a listen of that. And now onto the new recipe. I'll quickly run through them and then I'll hand over to Lisa. We've got some nice spicy food today. We've got a Thai style lard. Um, we've got loaded potato wedges, a lentil dal, classic katsu curry, and some delicious for this weather, uh, fruity frozen yogurt shards. I will hand over to the chef. Thank you. Thanks, Colette. Lovely to have you here today. I hope you're enjoying this lovely day. So as Colette said, we um, have lots of new recipes for you. In fact, every month we're doing uh, new recipes. All the previous workshops are available on YouTube as well. If you have a look at our YouTube channel, then you can uh, look back and see um, all the different recipes that we've done, which is quite interesting to look at how we um, have got so many, a lot of variety. I just want to say uh, namaste to um, our guests from Nepal. So lovely to have you here. And um, yeah, so I'm going to crack on. So I'm going to start with the lab. If you're not familiar with lab, it's... Um, traditionally from Thailand, that kind of area, and it's made with traditionally like a, a minced pork. But obviously, we're, we're not going to use that. If you've been to one of our workshops before, you'll see, you'll know rather that we love we love a bit of soy mince. Um, it's really a good, it's really good value soy mince, and um, really high protein, low in fat. It's a good store cupboard ingredient. And it looks like this, I hope you can see um, in its kind of raw state. And um, a little goes a long way. And it's just really, really good for you. So we're gonna use that. So I'm gonna start off by plugging my hob in, which is a little bit loud. Um, also, we've got a question for you, if you don't mind getting involved. So um, we'll get that up on the screen whilst I start heating up my hob. And the question, oh, is about love. Just waiting well, for it to pop up. Here we go. Have you ever tried love? Simple yes or no. We don't like to make the questions too difficult for you. It's just interesting to know whether or not you've um, tried it before, or whether you've heard of it before. So 18% um, yes have tried love, and 82% have never tried it. Well, then you're in for a treat. <laughs> so I have just added some red onion to the pan. Red onion, you obviously can use brown onion as well. I love red onions, it's got colour, it's sweeter, and I just um, like mixing things up. You can use a combination, just take a little bit of skin out there. And I've used a little bit of oil. And obviously I'm making a smaller amount than what you would um, make uh, for your school. And for all of our recipes, if you uh, have downloaded the recipes, you know this. Um, we work at nutritional balance. Um, new recipes, <laughs> excuse me, are, uh, should be suitable for all four nations. Easy to follow, and most importantly, delicious, but also nutritious. So I'm just going to fry that off. I won't cook things as long as I would normally do because obviously time isn't the essence, but it gives you an idea. So just some chopped onion, and to that, I'm gonna add in my dried soy mint. So I may not be able to use it all because um, my pan's quite small. So I'm gonna add some stock to that now. Because it tends to soak up 
kind of the absorb it absorbs all the liquid and then it pops up and it's got a really good taste and a really good texture and um, we get a lot of people talking about texture the sea is not going to be the same as eating meat that's not really the point anyway we're like encouraging children to try different things uh, because we're not about trying to make children vegetarian or vegan or car based we're about just trying to make it just an even playing field so there's lots of different options with health and sustainability uh, first and foremost and also taste anyway <laughs> stop talking so that's gonna um absorb all that liquid and then I can add some more as I go along. All the measurements in the new recipes will be there for you. Um, so now I've got some lovely spices. I've got brown ginger, I've got garlic granules, I've got some cumin and I've got some chili flakes. So this is a nice spicy one because children with what we've learned from well, we've already really, but children like adults love flavour. So it is really good to introduce them at a young age to lots of different flavors, styles, and it, it that will carry on throughout their whole lives. And and I think the statistics is um, if you've got to try something six times, a little bit of it six times. I think if someone doesn't like it, they're going to kind of get used to it. I don't know the complete stats. Some children will take to it straight away. Some might need a bit more encouragement. So I'm going to add a little bit more stock. So you've got those lovely warming spices and that will start to cook through and the onions will soften. So what we've got here is some lentils. I'm using uh, brown lentils um, just because I think they hold, for this particular dish, they hold the texture, they work really well. Well, I can smell the ginger. So I think, I, I can't remember if I told you I added brown ginger, but I did. You did, I think you did say. So. I did, I yeah. did. So I'm gonna add in some lentils. So as you know, if you're familiar with our workshops, we love using lentils. Lentils are such an underrated store cupboard ingredient. You can get them in tins, you can boil them up yourself, um, you can get them freeze packed. Uh, that's the right way to say it. So we're padding it out with lentils. And we also recommend if you do have meat dishes like a bolognese on your menu, that you blend it with 50% lentils. So you're immediately taking away 50% of the meat and therefore make it more healthy, more sustainable, potentially cheaper. I think since the cost of living crisis, lentils are one of the things that have actually gone down in price. So that's a win-win. Now to this dish, I'm now go we're now going to add some rice. Now I like to use whole milk brown rice. I think it's got a nutty flavor. And again, it's just better for you because it's got more fiber. And I see it tastes better, but, but um, so yeah. And again, so that's padding it out as well. So you can make a huge vat of this and it's really easy to make. So you've got all those lovely spices, you've got all the goodness, but it's really tasty. And it's a quick dish as well. So it's, um, yeah, it's a good one. Okay, so haven't finished yet. Still got more to add. Because it's packed, it's packed with flavor. So I'm just gonna give myself a bit of room. So uh, traditionally you'd use lime, but I'm going to use lemon today. But again, you could actually use both. So I'm gonna add in some lemon zest or lime zest if you prefer. That's what you, as I said, traditionally use. This is going to add colour, it's going to add goodness, you've got to go to the lovely vitamin C. And also it just cuts through the richness of the mints, the soy mints. And then I'm going to add in the, um, the juice as well. So let's get some room. I'm going to chop that down, chop that in half. I bet it's smelling good there. It actually smells amazing. It's this so was good. one of my favourite, favourite things to eat before I yeah. stopped eating meat completely. Yeah. This is but you don't have to stop eating meat completely to enjoy this. You can have both. It's such a good dish. 
So um, yeah. It just feels lighter and kind of fresher. I think the flavors and, and how you're going to show that you serve it is, yeah, it's a nice yeah, thing to see. I like it. I like it a lot. So uh, the next thing I'm going to add to this will be some spring onions. Again, they add crunch, a little bit of a different flavor. They've got a strong flavor. They just work really, really well. So I would add the spring onions last. I'm going to turn it off. And I would cook this for probably at least another 10 minutes. Then I would let it cool. You can have it hot or cold, by the way. But the way it's traditionally served and works really beautifully is in little gem leaves. And I just love that. So it can be a grab and go. You can obviously put it in a wrap, you could put it on jacket potato, um, you could serve it with wedges. I mean, the list is endless. However, we could, we're going with the more traditional style by um, adding it into wraps. But as I said, <clears throat> this is hot and I would cook it a little bit longer, but just to give you an idea of what it looks like. And these little gem cups are really, really good. We've actually got another recipe in our um, brochure, if you download that, using little gem cups and that's uh, more of a summery salad but this um yeah I mean look it's just so nice oh it's quite hot though obviously <laughs> don't burn yourself yeah we need you <laughs> I'd style it out and you just pretend it doesn't hurt and it's got dried coriander in it as well so really packed ginger garlic coriander those lovely herbs just want to present it just to show you how you can do it and obviously you can have it in a big tray if you think oh it's too fiddly to put into cups honestly it doesn't take too long but if you did if you didn't want to do that maybe it's a really busy service that day you could as I said you could serve it on its own or with or with something else you don't have to serve it like this it's just to give you an idea of how it can be served mm. it's just um Actual goodness, and it's something different as well. So hopefully the children will be like, "Oh, what's this?" And then one more, just to show you. And you've got a really good balance of all the nutrients. And if yeah, if you don't like the lettuce, you can have some veg with it and have it on a bowl or a plate. Yeah, That'd be nice. Okay, put one more in there. So I'm just going to put this over to one side. And I'll continue cooking about it a little bit later on. And I'll just show you. So hopefully you can see that. I'm not sure you can see it very well. And then you've got just these lovely little cups of goodness, and that's called lark. So I hope that's given you a little bit of inspiration about what you could try. Very nice. So the next dish I want to show you is really easy, but I I just like when I make these, I literally can't stop eating them. So we are making the loaded wedges. So loaded wedges are just, you just, they just feel so indulgent, but they're actually, you know, good for you. Now I'm going to take it out. So let's do the poll question if you don't mind. So would the children like the loaded wedges? Another yes or no? So I've already, um, well, actually, I'll wait to hear your results first before I move on. A hundred percent, yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I mean, who doesn't like loaded wedges? So these are, I've got sweet potato and potato, because I think it's nice to have a mixture of the both. You could actually also do some butternut squash into wedges as well, just to add more flavour flavour and texture of different vegetables um, because loaded wedges are loaded wedges and once they've got everything on them the children aren't going to notice I don't think particularly so um so yeah all I did was cut them into wedges a little bit tiny bit of oil roasted in the oven so to finish them off I'm going to add some sweet corn because you've got that lovely sweetness obviously and the crunch and the bright lovely colour which always looks good 
can be quite generous. I absolutely love sweet corn. We do a wonderful, really, really popular um, chickpea and sweet corn uh, mayo wrap. And again, the mixture can, it's literally just sweet, sweet corn and um, chickpeas and some mayonnaise and spices and we blitz it up and it's just so good. So that's um, another winner if you haven't done my dinner recipe. So we're gonna add some cheese. We make sure it's the uh, within the school food standards and within um, the nutritional standards for the children because all cheese obviously has is high in saturated fat, but children love cheese and that's why they're loaded wedges. And then we're just going to sprinkle that on top. So again, it's just uh, slightly indulgent, but obviously we, we're mindful of portion control. And I'm going to put this back in the oven. So we'll have a look at the end result a little bit later on, because I want the cheese to melt and give you a proper idea. And as you can see, it's a really easy tray bake. But um, I think that, you know, well, 100% of the children said would like it. So back in the oven it goes. So, down a bit and yeah easy to prepare and of course you've got the different vegetables as well it doesn't just have to be potatoes it can be a nice variety as well and uh, just to give you some ideas of what you can add to it so next up one of my favorite dishes which is a doll so let's get that old poll question up then I think for the lentil doll so do you currently serve doll on your menus Yes or no? Interesting. So I'd be I'm, waiting I'm, for the oh. Sorry, Claire. No, no, we're just waiting for the result. Oh. That's all. I think it's quite mixed from what it was looking. What it was looking. Oh, okay. Um, so 33% yes, or, so a third already have a dial on their menu, so that's positive. 44% uh, don't, and 22% don't, but would give it a go. So that's that's good. That would get us to over half of you. That's really good. Yeah, I think it's great. So I'm going to put my hob back on. So um, obviously, as I said before, we're huge fans of lentils here at Rover UK, and um, children, I think, it's so important and brilliant to introduce them to um, different cultures, different foods. And of course, um, something like lentils should be embraced and celebrated. So this particular lentil um, doll can be served on its own with some, um, some um, bread or like a wrap, some roti, or it can be on top of a jacket potato, or it can be a side dish, you know, it's however you want to do it. And um, I'm going to start off again by frying off some garlic, onion, and also some tomato paste. So let's get that on. I've got a little bit of oil in there. And then let me, I'm going to move something into a shot. I think you can see it. Here we go. So in my food processor, I've got some red kidney beans. If you haven't got a food processor in your school, you can mash, you can mash them with a potato masher or a sturdy fork. Potato mash is probably easier. You can even run a knife through them. They're super soft and you just wanna, you just wanna mash them up a bit. So I'm gonna add in the onions, garlic and tomato paste. So obviously traditionally you wouldn't have um, kidney beans, but the, they've got that lovely colour, the darkness. They also um, offer some more fibre, they offer, offer a really good flavour. It has it out, kidney beans are really good for you, packed with vitamins and minerals. And I'm just going to add a little bit of stock because my pan was a bit hot. The facial at the same time. Yeah. So we're going to let that do its thing. 
and I'm using the same lentils that I used before, so you can obviously bowl forward and you've got them for two different dishes. And um, I like them because they've got that lovely texture, whereas the orange lentils, which I'm using a little bit later on, are perfect in sauces and to thicken things. So, again, all the measurements will be done for you. All our recipes are for 10 portions, primary school portions, obviously. And if anyone has any questions, I think uh, maybe one came up, but I couldn't read it. If you do have any questions or comments, please join in. So absolutely. I'm going to add some of the lentils into my food processor along with the kidney beans. About half. About half. And then I'm going to add in a little bit of stock as well. And some more stock to my onions so it doesn't catch. Put it on high heat. And it just it just literally dissolves practically immediately. And I just want the onions to fry and soften and garlic. And also you must, as you well know, because you're probably a caterer or you obviously put it have a big interest in food. Uh so you always if you pick out your paste and it would be, it would be bitter. Again, I'm cooking this faster than I would, not a lot faster. We're only talking like this would take. 15 to 20 minutes, not long at all, but I'm doing it a little bit quicker. So I'm going to plug in my food processor again for time, it's quick, and I'm going to blitz these together. So sorry about the noise. You get a nice, lit, thick sauce. Now I'm going to add the rest of the lentils in. And then I'm going to add the spices after I give a good stir. So all, all I would do differently if I was, you know, in a school situation is I'd just let it, at the end I'd let it simmer for 10 to 15 minutes, just to make sure everything was cooked through and blended. Other than that, the process is exactly the same. I wonder if this is how you make your dal. I'd be interested to know. Can you have a bit more? I'd also be interested to know how popular the dal dish is. So to this, I'm going to add cumin, turmeric, and what? Yeah, what? Well, I've never wrote it down. Garam masala, which is a mixture of spices. So, um, nice and spicy. You want to have loads of different flavors in there. And also, spices count of your count as um, one of your seven a day. And uh, it's a, a turmeric anti and anti inflammatory. Mm. So many different. Oh, it smells amazing. So many different beneficial properties. But above all, it tastes brilliant as well. It's amazing how a few spices just change a whole dish. So you could use different lentils, couldn't you? You you have used the brown lentils, but I guess you could use others depending on how you like it. If you want it softer, um, we I sometimes make it with the what are they? The yellow yellow split peas, like the chana dal, which, yeah, which nice. probably is, goes softer. But I yeah. mean, I love the look of this one. It's it's got more texture. It looks really nice. I love the color. Yeah. So you can yeah, try I mean, out different ways. Okay, so that clicks back in now. For now. But yeah, I think once you um, try one, you're like, oh, this is good, but try some more. I'm gonna pour that in. Oops. Let's get And give it a lovely stir. In fact, I've got some more lentils here. I'm going to add them in. And at this point, you can add some more stock 
if you need to, because it's going to reduce down with the cooking. So you might want to add a little bit more stock. So I've got extra over here. And then, as I said, I'm going to just let that simmer. Yeah, uh, if anybody, I know several of you are serving a dal. What do what do the children think of it at your school? We'd be just interested to know. Pop it in the chat if you've got any feedback. Is it popular? Are they not sure? Yeah, let us know because this is our first dal that we're <laughs> making for school plate. So we'd love to know what you think. Yeah. How does it work for you? Don't be shy, please. <coughs> So I'm just, um, I've got one that I've made earlier, which is just simmered away. So I'm just going to plate that up for you. I might have overcooked this a bit, but I'll actually know it's exactly how I like it. It's all that massive, no, I'm kidding. No, it's perfect. So well, I'm just going to be eating it, so yeah. <laughs> There's no wastage here, no waste here. So um, yeah, I'm just going to paint it up and it's just a really lovely um, side dish as well, as I said, or works really well um, with a nice roti or some naan bread or a wrap, or any type of bread really. I'll make a bit of a mess here. Let me just wipe that down a second. I'll show you the mess. And then what I love to do, um, especially if we've got some spices in there, is add a little bit of hard yogurt to it because it makes it look more interesting and it cools it down for those children that may or may not like the spice. So just give it a little swirl around. And then I always like to add some fresh herbs. I don't know. I mean, this is just my personal thing. I don't know whether you had actual fresh herbs at school. That would be that's another thing I'd like to know. And then you've got a really beautiful doll that's just packed with flavour, really easy to make and um, really, really good for you, like exceptionally good for you. Looks lovely. So there are first Lentil extravaganza today. Yeah. Always. I'm just going to give this a little stir. Apologies. In fact, I'll turn that off. Right, let's check on our wedges. I think that they are good. So I'm going to show you the wedges, the loaded wedges. So it's 3.35 or 25 minutes left, so that you're doing great on time. Oh, I'm plowing through the good today. Plowing through. Right, so let me show you these. What a moment, I'm just going to get my oven gloves. If anyone has any questions, then we've got time to do a QA. and a We'd love that if anyone has any questions. So Barbara has just made a comment, actually, Lisa. She said that they use now use lots of fresh herbs and it makes a huge difference and students definitely notice. Um, so that's really interesting. And Barbara, are these primary children or secondary, just out of interest? That'd be good to know. Oh, that looks good. Secondary. Um, Secondary I, children. Yeah. yeah. I, I thought secondary. Yeah. But I think what would be great is if actually we start with um, junior school as yeah. well, because why why wait till they're a bit older? Why not introduce yeah. those fresh herbs and have all those health benefits? Um, if you could just send that over, please, the potato and cheese, <laughs> that'd be great. Yeah. So this is um again easy, but lots of goodness, a little bit of you know, indulgent. Um, with the cheese, but um, you know, yeah, yeah we can't all be. We we'll have a little bit of something. Tom says the dal looks great. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Yeah, it tastes okay. really good. It's a lovely dish. Can't really see that, but you can see a little bit. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to show you. Four. Yes, I'm going to show you how to make. Uh, a katsu curry with one of uh, the best curry dishes that um, I've ever tasted. I mean, and I'm not even like a huge curry 
fan. No, no that's a lie. I love curry, but um, the, not, the, I, I didn't realise how much I loved curry. Anyway, that's irrelevant what I like. So the poll question is, have you ever served katsu curry at school? Thank and we'll you. just wait for the responses. So yes, 67%, so two thirds <laughs> and one third, no, not yet. So I wonder if you use chicken for your katsu curry, or if you do a plant-based version already. Yeah. And if so, what do you use? I'd really love to know. So here's Please just the key facts about the, about the dish. Thank you. So katsu curry, um, in the sauce, we're going to use ginger, turmeric, and curry powder. We've got uh, onions and um, carrots chopped up. Also got some um, garlic powder as well. So it's just a little bit easier to use and tastes just as good and has exactly the same health benefits but you just don't have to peel and chop. So it's just a bit quicker. So if you can use it in a powdered version when you're making a huge batch, why not? This freezes really well, this sauce. We just had a comment, Lisa, from Dee, who said that um, for their uh, katsu, they use sweet potato, which is brilliant. Oh, yes, we did discuss like that. We yeah, like style. We, yeah, we did discuss uh, sweet potato. We've got brilliantly. We thought about aubergine, but we weren't sure if the children would like it. So we've gone with a protein fillet, uh, obviously a vegan, a plant-based, um, but this, you can adapt it and we probably will do other versions on the same uh, recipe page, just to give you ideas. And but just quickly, know, sorry, Lisa, Kelly says um, they generally have the sauce separately and then you can kind of give kids that option. Do they want the veg option with it or do they want the chicken version? And then they can kind of mix and match. So kind of what we're we're thinking, we won't be doing a chicken version, <laughs> but no. we will have different veggie ones. That's really helpful. Thank you for yeah. everyone for the feedback. Sorry, over to you, Lisa. It is so lovely to hear, you know, exactly what you're doing and for you to let us know because obviously we do speak to caterers all the time but it's still hard to kind of keep up so it's lovely to have instant feedback so thank you so i'm going to fry off the carrots and onion in it goes and i'd be really interested i'm not interested today I'm very interested today um, in finding out how you make your curry sauce and whether you use the ingredients that we, we're using. So I'll talk you through what we're actually using. So I've told you the spices, so the carrot and also the carrot and onion. Stock, I'm also going to use um, orange lentils. I love orange lentils. They go, they're really good for thickening sauces. They're good for adding protein. They're obviously super good for you. Store covered ingredients. I'm going to use some coconut milk, but a light coconut milk. So you've got that lovely creaminess, but we are going to add tons and tons. We can do only a little, goes a long way taste wise. And then we're going to have a nice vegetable stock to pad it out. So again, frying these off, but not taking uh, as long as I normally would. Obviously, the smaller you chop your veg, the quicker they will cook. However, this is going to be thick. So you can use a thick blender, food processor. Um, I think actually do to get the correct consistency, you do need to use, I think, um, machinery. Machinery sounds quite equipment. Yeah, it needs to be nice and smooth, doesn't it, this sauce? Yeah, to get that lovely smoothness. Um, and what we said, so we know some schools don't have the equipment, so we try and think of it like a, just a few different ways that you can do it and still enjoy the recipes. And we always mention that in most supermarkets, you can get a stick blender for around five pounds. You know, if 
it's just, you know, absolutely didn't have anything you could use. So to that, I'm going to add in the lentils. And they don't take long to cook these lentils. And they're the same color, you know, they really enhance the, the color of the sauce and they make it really nice and thick and delicious. Now to that, I'm going to add in the spices. So we've got turmeric, curry powder, ground ginger, and ground garlic, garlic granules. In it goes. So again, another real packs a punch, really lovely curry. Toast them off. So yeah, today's um, workshop really is about flavor and getting as much flavor in. Ooh. Standing over it. So I'm going to add in some stock. And what I would normally do is I would let that uh, cook for at least five to ten minutes before I'd let the lentil start to soften and the carrots before I added in the coconut milk. In fact, I'd probably add that towards the end. Obviously, I can't lift it up and show you because it's a liquid. Add in the coconut milk and just pretend that I've been reducing it down. Bring it to the boil and then you simmer. Just let it do its thing. Simmer, simmer, simmer. So I'm going to take this over to my other hob. Well, I've got one. I made earlier. I'm just going to heat up a little bit. So, um, I'll show you what I actually uh, dressed the other dish. So, I'll just heat that up a little bit towards the end, but I just want to show you um, how we coat it. So, you can use um, to make your we're using panko crumbs, that's what I'm trying to say to you. You can use bread crumbs, but we like to use um, like a fine panko crumb. You can actually make your own panko crumbs. It's super easy. I'm um, using stale bread and you just blitz up in the food processor, then toast it in the oven, done. So you never have to have any waste. And then you can keep them in the freezer. And I'm going to make um, a little sauce to make it sticky, so I'm kind of going to pan it. So again, you can use corn flour, but I'm using a pea, a pea flour, so you can use gram flour. Um, just tastes nicer, has that nice yellow colour, and is um, good for you. Got a protein. It's going to add some water to it. Oh, um, Kelly says a desiccated coconut is also good as a gluten-free version. That sounds good. Yeah, I wouldn't have thought of that. That's a brilliant idea, Kelly. Thank you. Yeah, that'd be delicious, I imagine. Gosh, with the coconut milk, yum. Very indulgent, but I like it. So I'm going to um, make a little bit of thick sauce. Stir that in. So again, very um, quick and easy to make. And I'm really glad that some of you are already um, serving it and it's popular because um, that's, you know, really, I think, quite progressive of you because some areas, some places, just would not have, just wouldn't even consider it. But you know, we know that it's the kids, children will like it. Once you serve it, they'll be like, oh, this is lovely, it's different. It's more the adults maybe sometimes feel a bit unsure rather than the children because they may not have tried it. So it's really important that um, when we do our training, that the caterers that may or may not have tried some of the dishes do make and try them. Because then obviously they know, oh yeah, this is good, this is different, but I like it. Or no, I don't like it, and uh, what, but what I would do is do X, Y, Z. So it doesn't always have to be followed to the latter. Obviously, for the school food standard and nutrition value, it does. Okay, so that's, I'm going to pour that into, needed to be stirred a little bit more, but you get the idea. And then I'm going to use these fillets, which I'm sure you're familiar with these fillets. But as we've already discussed, you can use uh, vegetables, which is, I mean, I love sweet potatoes, though, as Colette well knows. <laughs> it's one of my favourite things. Queen of sweet potatoes here. <laughs> we love sweet potatoes. 
and then into from. So again, it doesn't take any time whatsoever, like it's very quick to make. Lime tray, kickback, lined baking tray. You can line them up. And then you just bake them off in the oven, it takes no time at all. I have one I've made earlier. I just want to mix up this salt so it's nice and hot really quickly. And then I will show you that. So we like to serve this with a uh, brown rice. Because again, uh, metaphor you, I think it tastes better. Ooh. Done that. That'll do anyway. So it's nice and hot. And then, really nice hot. And then you can call that lovely curry sauce. Wow. It's really just delicious. These are loads of my favorite dishes today. Really good. And you've got a really lovely, yummy katsu curry, which is packed with goodness, protein, fiber, and um, yes, just absolutely can't it's going delicious, but it is. Okay, so I'm going to show you a dessert now. And if you've been to our workshops before, you know that we try and steer away from cakes. Cakes, we like to think for birthday special occasions, um, not for every day. <laughs> We'd all love to eat cake, but well, I would eat cake every day, but we know it's just not good for you. So um, we like to use different things. So this is a really nice, again, uh, quick recipe. Where can I put this? You can see, maybe here-ish, not really. There we go, we've got a tiny bit of it. Tiny bit, a teaser. So this is, uh, we're using plant yogurt. So let's have a um, look at the poll after we've had a look at the nutritional facts. So do you offer plant yogurt is the poll? Yes, um, no, don't think it would be popular. No, but we would consider. Oh, interesting. It's going up and down, it's going up and down. <laughs> Okay, results are in. 13% um, yes, already offer plant yogurt. yogurt. Um, a quarter of you say no and don't think it would be popular and the remaining 63% don't currently um, offer it but would consider it, so that's great. I would say um, if you don't think it would be popular, I would give it a go because I, you know, from experience, we know that they want the kids like it because it tastes really good. I think it's definitely worth trying. And definitely worth trying some different types of, um, yeah, plant yogurt if you if you can. Maybe some sweetened and unsweetened and what have you. Find one that works. Yeah, good advice. So I've got plant yogurt in my bowl and I've got some maple syrup. In it goes. I'm going to give that a stir. Again, easy. I mean, you could add vanilla, you could use um, an agave nectar, you could add a fruit syrup, but we've gone with maple syrup, which is a really lovely natural sweetener. And then on a lined baking tray, I'm going to pour out the yogurt, sweetened yogurt. And then I've just, you can use a spoon, but I'm just going to use a palette knife just to be, just because I like more washing up. So I'm going to use this palette knife, it's really easy to do, and smooth it over. And as Colette mentioned, this is a really lovely dish for the summer. 
I mean, I think you eat ice cream in the winter as well, to be honest, don't they? So you could have it. So to that, I've got pumpkin seeds and sunflower seeds. Really good for you. Loads of, tons of goodness. And I'm just going to sprinkle them on top. And also nice colours as well, makes it really colourful. But maybe not something the children will necessarily just eat on its own. So I'm going to assume, but when it's added into like a dessert, and it's got a nice crunch to it. Lots of healthy fats. Yeah. Good. And gives you nice some energy as well. Mm. So sprinkle that over. And then I've got some frozen berries, which were frozen, but obviously they've been out for nearly an hour now. So you would just use them straight from the freezer. And just put them in and press it down a bit. Now, if like me, you have just let them um, sit out for a bit, you do get the lovely liquid, which I can spoon over as well, and that will set into the yogurt. So a nice fruity, yogurty, crunchy dessert, refreshing and, and colourful and healthy. And then a little bit of a drizzle. Got a couple of comments. So Michael says that the cost of this dish at 59p a portion may be a little too expensive for primary schools. That's interesting. Yeah, it's probably one of the maybe the higher end of our dishes, I would say. Um, I guess depending on what else you're putting it with and balancing things out over the week, it could maybe that's fit true. in then. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, that's interesting feedback, Michael. And um, Dee's just said a lot of schools use easy yo yogurt and make it on site. So this would be quite an easy change. Don't know that's easy yo. And that's the powder, I believe, easy yo. So yeah, in the freezer it goes. Lovely. And I'll show you what it looks like once it's been um, frozen. So this has been out an hour, so it, it was frozen. But at this stage, what we can do is um, score it. Let me put my... And then put it just back in the freezer for half an hour. But if you pre-score it anyway, once it is like semi-frozen, semi-frozen, it's easy to break up. But I've got some that have already been frozen. And you've got like a really lovely snack or dessert. It just oh, looks delicious. It looks like kind of when you buy that chocolate slabs of broken up chocolate. Yeah, the bark. It looks so good. I also think this would work well in something. So like to finish off something, but maybe that's yeah. more of an, an adult. Yeah, and it's so, really yeah. nice. And but really simple to make. So um, we have for you the spicy lard. We have the lentil dal. We also have the loaded wedges, sweet potato and potato. We've got the katsu curry with brown rice and the lovely curry sauce. And the, the uh, fruity shards. So um, yeah, any questions, please let us know. Any suggestions, we'd love to hear from you. If you're thinking about um, having working with us, and um, as Colette mentioned, our services are free. We are a community interest company and uh, we'd love to come and help you. We do training, we do our workshops every single month. And uh, yeah, it'd be lovely to hear from you. So um, just to also say, I mean, well done, Lisa. It's absolutely, it looks all gorgeous. I could eat the whole Thank lot you. right now. Um, this is our last um, online workshop. Um, we're having a little breather over the summer. Well, only because everybody else is having a little breather over the summer. And we'll be back on the 20th of September for our next workshop. So um, do register. I think the link's in the chat. Um, and we're going to be focusing next time completely on tofu, aren't we? Which we yeah. haven't really done before. We're just going to focus on one ingredient and all the different things you can do 
with tofu because it's something we get asked about so there'll be some of our favorite dishes in there and um, we've got some desserts with tofu so yeah um, do join us don't forget to come back we we'd love yeah. to see you in September and have a good summer and thanks for all the nice uh, messages and saying it looks really tasty and thanks for the inspiration and tasty looking recipes so yeah Lisa is the one to thank so well done Lisa oh thank you everybody we'll see you in September and thanks to our friends from Nepal for joining us too that's amazing see you soon bye